Hi, Madison. Madison, can you hear me? Madison? I'm here. Okay, no, I, I, I freak out when uh, I want to make sure people can hear me. That's all. How you doing? Hear. I'm great. Just chilling, kind of. I thought, I was surprised you sent the link out so early. Uh, I, I changed it to 7 o'clock, didn't I? Yeah, I mean, you just usually send it promptly at seven. <laughs> usually, early. well, no. What happens, Madison, is uh, I normally am uh, uh, doing something like answering email or something, or mm -hmm. grading papers. So I usually lose track of time. And there are two ways to be late. One is to be early, and the other is to actually be late. You're so, right. Uh, so that's normally why why I'm late. And tonight I. Uh, it's my wife's birthday and we have a couple people over. So I have to do this class and then rejoin them again. So, Oh yeah. Get back to the party for sure. Absolutely. Uh, you're doing okay. You understood last week's. Yeah, it was pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Um, the manual is pretty easy. It lays out, like tells you exactly how to calculate everything. One second. I'll be right back. Sorry, that was my wife, or that was my daughter for my wife for her birthday. So that's who we're sitting in that. Oh, we got another person in. We got three people. Yay. We get another 11, we'll be set here. Seriously, Madison, I haven't been, uh, um, I've been, uh, I've been uh, uh, doing this at seven o'clock, haven't I? Yeah, you have been. I just, okay. maybe I'm surprised I signed on so early. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I, I really, I, I don't know. I just, Got to make sure I get uh, people in. And the trouble is I started this at 7.30, so people may have gotten used to 7.30. I don't know. We'll have to see how it goes. So right now, actually, Madison, you're good. Brian, you're good. And okay. Who's Garcia? Oh, Romero, Romero. Romero, you got to give me a good notebook. Give me a good notebook. Brian and Madison, were all your grades magically brought up to nines? Yeah, that yes. was great. That was, thank you. No, it's, it's not a thank you. It's something I promised you. All I wanted to do was to, for you to get one right. As soon as you get one right, the rest of them are going to be easy. I can just boom, boom, boom and get rid of them. So Romero, get it right for me, okay? Romero? Romero, are you one of those people? Yeah, I got it. <laughs> all, right, all right, I thought you were one of those people that logs on and then goes away. No, no, I just got it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I got you. All right, now we've got Kara joining us. But none of you are showing yourselves. Nobody's showing their face. Uh, oh, thank you, Kara. Kara, you usually do show your face. It's, it's nice. It's nice seeing people. Okay. That hasn't let Madison Romero and Brad. I, I, I have. You, you have to understand, guys. If I don't see your face, I get this picture of my mind of you being in like a uh, flannel, flannel uh, sleepwear, and just knocking around in a robe all day. Right. Uh, Romero just popped up when I said that. All right, guys. Anybody have any trouble with last week's lab? Nothing? Well, I had a little bit, but I think um, ah. I kind of understood. I mean, I wasn't in the class, so I think that was also, a, you know, 
I Go can't on. ask questions as much as I wanted to when I watched the video. So I was like, I mean, let's just go for it, I guess. <laughs> That's the downside of doing this stuff by uh, remote, because if you're not there to ask questions, who knows, you know? So, uh, uh, Veronica, did you get it? Well, yes. My question was, um, it was asking about the volume. There's one part that you have to use the volume of, I don't remember if it was the HCL or, or the N8. Okay, you're, oh, you have to, you actually have to use both, Veronica. Yeah, but there was one that I know in the video you said that we have to um, subtract the final and the initial, and then I knew how to do that one. But the other one, I wasn't sure if you wanted us to use just the final or also do the no. subtraction. So what okay. I did was just subtract. It's a subtraction. Everything, yes, everything in that last lab, you had an initial burette reading and a final. Okay. When you have an initial and a final, you subtract the two. That's how much volume is delivered. Oh, yeah, that's what I ended up doing because I was like, if he says that we need to do it in this part, then we most probably do it in this part too. So um, that's I ended basically up doing what it. happened. We're kind of going to do something similar this week that we did last week when you did the HCL back titration. Okay. So we're going to do that, but uh, oh, hell, it's, oh, it's only three minutes after. I'll wait two more minutes and then I'll get started here. All right, guys. I got to see how many people are in there. I got actually I had eight people in. That's a quorum. Do I, do I have a motion to start the, to start the lesson. Do I have a second? Yes. All in favor? Yes. Sure. <laughs> All right, let's get started. All right. The quick, it's really not going to, it's the same stuff we did last week. So it's really not going to take that much more of an effort on our part. Okay. So again, we're gonna use the same principles we used last week. Remember, when it's pink, it's neutral. And when it's neutral, the H plus ions equal the OH ions. We on base? Do I hear an amen? Romero, do I get an amen out of you, Romero? You have to understand, amen. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking at Romero, it looks like he's in a crystal ball. He's, everything is dark around him, and he's got a shadow of a light somewhere, so it really looks like he's in a crystal ball. All right. I'm only going to generalize about this because I really want you to paraphrase it in the lab notebook. Generally speaking, it's harder to determine when a color disappears than when it appears. Does that make sense to you? It's like when you're trying to determine when it starts. That's harder to detect than determining when it appears. Because when you're trying to make it disappear, you still have that little tint of the color around it. So basically, we want to approach this by adding base to the acid, which is clear. Does that make sense to you guys? It's easier to detect when we see a color rather than when we see a color disappear. Okay. Now with this indicator, the indicator turns pink with base. So we want to add base to the acid so that we can see the color appear. The way we do that is we are going to add excess acid. We're going to add excess HCl to our amount of antacid. So if we add antacid as a base, HCl is the acid. So if we add more HCl than we need, then the pH is going to be acidic. And then we have to add base to it to get the pink color. 
Are you with me so far, guys? All right. So when we're doing this, we're adding the antacid, which is a base, and the NaOH, which is a base. So we add those two together, and that's going to equal the moles of the HCl. Trouble is, we have two different reactions. The first reaction is just HCl with NaOH. Fully balanced equation here. I get one HCl for every one NaOH. There's a one-to-one -one ratio between my HCl and my NaOH. That's not the case with the calcium carbonate. I need two HCLs to react with every one calcium carbonate. So there's a two-to-one ratio of HCl to calcium carbonate. So again, because I've added excess HCl, my total moles of HCl are going to be equal to the moles neutralized by the carbon carbonate, the CO3, plus the moles neutralized by the NaOH. Okay, we weighed a tablet. We took one of those Tums, put it on a scale, and it weighed 0 0.1045 grams. We crushed it up, pounded it into powder. Then, after we pounded it into powder, we put it into an Erlenmeyer, and then we added 20 milliliters of HCl. We started off at 0.7 milliliters. We released the liquid until the burette read 20.70, then stopped it. We noted that the concentration of the HCl is 0.1057. So right now we've had the HCl in with the antacid. The antacid has neutralized some of the HCl. I then take that Erlenmeyer and I put it under the sodium hydroxide burette. The original volume of the sodium hydroxide was 5.75. We titrated that, and it just turned pink when the final volume was 16.80 milliliters. Keep in mind, we're using the same base that we used last week. Now, when I came up with that data, the, I found out that the molarity from the CAN data was 0 0.1010 molar. Is that what you all came up with? Talk to me. Are you talking about the third trial? No, I'm talking about the average of all three. I got like zero zero five. Mm, I don't have I don't have a happy thought for you, Brian. <laughs> um, I got. The average, I got 0. 0.00002. I nope, I have even less a happier thought than you. For you. Oh, wait. Are you, you're saying the average, right? The average of the concentration. Oh, man, I got it written somewhere. In any case, guys, I want you to forget about what you got. I want you to use 0. 0.1010 molar as the concentration of your base. Okay? 0. 0.1010 is the concentration of your base. I'll check on the concentration of the acid in a second. Okay, remember, this whole, this whole convoluted idea. Remember, moles of HCl equal the moles of HCl neutralized by NaOH plus the moles neutralized by the calcium carbonate. My moles of HCl are going to be my volume of HCl. 20.70 milliliters minus 0 0.70 milliliters. This gives me 20 milliliters of HCl I actually put into the flask. I multiply that by one over a thousand milliliters 
And then I multiply that by the concentration of 0 0.1057. So I start off with 0 0.002114 moles of HCl. All right. So I'm going to have to do a different couple things here. Okay, so the amount of NaOH I used is the volume of NaOH, 11.05 milliliters, times the concentration, which is 0 0.1010. This gives me 0 0.001114. One six moles of NaOH. Now, guys, this is my moles of HCl. I've got my moles of NaOH. So if I subtract my moles of NaOH from my moles of HCl, I'm going to get the moles of HCl neutralized by my calcium carbonate. So I subtract those two numbers, 0 0.002114 from 0 0.001116. And this gives me 0 0.000998. Are you with me? Anybody lost right now? The 0 0.000998 moles are the moles of HCl that have been neutralized by my calcium carbonate. But remember, I have two moles of HCl for every one mole of calcium carbonate. So I'm going to take my 0 0.000998. And I'm going to multiply that by 1 over 2. And I get 0 0.000499 moles of calcium carbonate. Now all I have to do is take my moles of calcium carbonate and multiply it by 100. 0 0.09, which is the molecular weight. And this gives me 0 0.0499 moles or grams of calcium carbonate. But remember, we weighed the tablet to begin with, right? The mass of the tablet was 0 0.1045. Five. So all I have to do to get the mass percent is to take my weight of calcium carbonate, divide it by the weight of my whole tablet, and this gives me 47.8% of calcium carbonate within the antacid tablet. Do I have any questions here, guys? I don't have the a whole lot more here. I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, the mass percent is, you divide them with, with what, like, um, is the mass percent of the Veronica. HCL? No, Veronica, the, Veronica. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. When we started out, the first step was to take our antacid tablet and weigh it. Okay, Veronica? Okay. All the titration is doing is finding out how much calcium carbonate was in with the point, how much, of, how much weight of this 0.1045 was calcium carbonate. 
And the titration was what determined that. Oh, okay. I see now. Okay. Questions, ladies and gentlemen. Kara, you good? Thumbs up, Kara. Okay. Ramiro, I see you. You good with this? You understanding it? Or, or you're good? Okay, you, you looked a little bit confused there for a second. Okay, literally speaking, guys, this is the whole lab. Uh, let me see where I want to go with this now. All right, now, please. Ladies and gentlemen, please. The data is always going to be in course content down near the bottom, student data for labs. Just click on that. Then you got to go back up. Click on the, on the uh, uh, website. It will print up a PDF file. So we are going to go to the PDF file and we're going to go down to titration of the antacid. I don't think you're sharing it. your screen with I am not sharing the screen. Okay, stop. Okay. Are you seeing it now? Yes. Okay. The molarity, the molarity of the sodium hydroxide, just put 0 0.1010. Molarity he's giving you for the HCL is 0 0.1002. You're weighing the antacid before you start. This is how much HCL you are using with this much concentration. That's more HCL than you need. So you got to titrate a little bit of it back with NaOH. And that's the volume of the NaOH. Your molarity is 0 0.1010. You have two trials here. So I'm going to get a I want a standard deviation from this since you do have two trials. Question on the data table, guys. No. Okay, are you seeing the, the, are you seeing something on the screen now? Student data for labs? Yes. Thank you. So I'm going to go down and do titration of an acid and we're going to get in and do the quit. We're going to look at the, the results section preview. Start quiz. Don't worry about the sample number. You get a free five points. Okay, what volume? They give you the beginning volume of the HCL. They give you the final volume. Subtract the two. That will give you the volume of HCL. They also give you the volume of NaOH. That volume is what took your solution to the pink color. Again, you're going to do final volume of the NaOH minus initial volume of the NaOH. How many moles of HCl? You're going to take the number you got in question two, multiply that by one over a thousand to get to liters, and then multiply that by the concentration you found in the, in the table, the concentration of HCl you found in the student data table. How many moles of NaOH? Again, you're going to find the answer you had in question two, for milliliters, you're going to multiply that by one over a thousand liters. 
And then you're going to multiply that by 0 0.1010. The number I told you was the average from the week before. So now we have moles of HCl. We have moles of NaOH. How many moles of HCl were neutralized by the tablet? We get this number. We get A by subtracting moles of HCl and moles of NaOH. That will give us the moles of HCl neutralized by the tablet. How many moles of CaCO3 did the tablet contain? Right here, this gives you the moles of HCl. To get moles of CaCO3, I have to multiply that by one mole of CaCO3 over two moles of HCl because the molar ratio between HCl and CaCO3 is two HCls for every one CaCO3. I then take the moles of CaCO3 Multiply that by 109, which is the molecular weight of calcium carbonate. That will give me the grams of CaCO3 that the tablet contained. Mass was the mass that's recorded in the data table. The percent mass in trial one, you are going to show the work. In other words, you're going to get the grams of CaCO3 from trial one divided by the entire mass of your antacid tablet for trial one. You have to show at least trial one. For trial two, you just have to give me what the, what the percent of calcium carbonate for trial two was. For number three, you just take B and C, add them up, divide by two. Give me the average. And basically, you are done. Any questions? Okay, I need to Not get out. Not for now. Veronica, ask your questions earlier in the week, next week. Yeah. It's just sometimes it's hard for me to do the lab the days before the actual due day because I work. And last weekend was crazy. They put me to work Thursday to Monday. So it's like, gosh, it was horrible. I'll tell you what, Veronica, what are you doing after this lab? I have to do bio lab. Oh, what's more important, chemistry or bio? Well, bio is not even a science. <laughs> well, you can tell your I, you can tell your professor I said so. No, I'm not gonna tell her that. <laughs> <laughs> Who is it? Um, her name in my my lecture is with Fernandez. And my lap is with, I don't know if I'm going to say it right, Popa, Popa. Yeah, go ahead and tell them. <laughs> All right. Okay, now you have, these are the tough questions. All right. When you're doing this experiment, okay, you had a an NaOH, and you had an air bubble. You had an air bubble there. So did you deliver more NaOH than you thought you did? Part of that volume that you put in there was an air bubble. So did you deliver more than you said you did? Brian, what do you think? Yes. Yes, you did. Because part of that volume was air. So you delivered more NaOH. Now, this is part of the critical thing. All right? So it's asking. The volume was incorrectly high. 
That's what we're saying there. You performed the experiment. Uh, and the air bubble didn't disappear. It's a stupid question. The air bubble didn't disappear. Would the volume remain unchanged? The air bubble's still there. Yes. Moving correctly, hi. The air bubble is still there, guys. So whatever volume the air bubble would have added hasn't been added because the air bubble is still in the tip. Uh, okay. Hmm. Okay, what he's implying, what he's implying with this is that the solid is carbonic acid. If you read through the problem, he's implying that the insoluble solid is carbonic acid. So basically, you've gotten carbonic acid that has not dissipated. How is that going to affect your results? Question four basically is just a reiteration of what we did in the uh, problem itself. Questions here, guys. I like it. Everybody here just wants to go out and eat at this point, right? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I'm hungry. I'm only, it's all, I've only been in it for a half an hour, guys. I'm here for you. If you need to ask questions, I'm here. Uh, it's really not that much more involved than last week. Are we good? Do we count the pheno indicator as one of the chemical hazards? You could, yeah. Okay. All right, Aisa, you here, Aisa? Yes, I'm here. Veronica's here. Kara's here. Cassandra. Cassandra. Madison was here. Ramiro. Alex, I think I saw you in here. Alex? Yeah, I'm here. Ten. 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 Mac, I think I saw. Bell, is Bell here? I'm here. Uh, Victoria, I saw. Brittany. Grazi. I'm here. Thank you, Grazi. And Brian is here. So I'm missing Cassandra, Tin, and Brittany. Okay, guys, if you don't have any more questions, I'm going to get back to my party. <laughs> um, Seriously, I'm here. You, I'm here for you. Veronica. Will you um, update this PowerPoint with the evidence that you just did? Uh, Veronica, all I did was change the concentration. I didn't do anything different other than that. So okay. no, no, it's, it's that's foolish because I would be doing it. No, I'm not going to do it. I've given okay. you what I had was I had one concentration. All I did when I was messing around with it was I changed the concentration. Okay. All right. All right. So just um, the molarity for molarity for the NaOH is 0 0.1010. Okay. All right. All right. Guys, if you don't have anything, I'm going to close this up. 
Remember, I'm available. Remember, you can phone me. And if I'm not teaching class, like Veronica knows, if I'm not teaching class, I will answer it. If I'm teaching class, I won't. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Hey, things happen. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, if that's it, take care. I will see you again next Wednesday. Have a good night. Have a good night. Have a good night. Oh, okay, good.